fact is that it's very difficult to explain how even the first living cell came into being. Well, that's not that's not what evolution is about. It's about the process. It's not about the origins. Well, but Ash, just a quick reaction. Robert is a paleontologist and a Christian. Reaction to what you've heard? Mm. Great. I, I suspect, Greg, that perhaps you are under the understanding that uh, an evolutionary account of biodiversity is all about random chance. And that's not quite accurate. I mean, you haven't, we haven't given you quite enough time to articulate your full view, perhaps. But that's the first thing I would say. It's not, you know, the, uh, the theory of, Darwin's theory of descent with modification is not about pure interface, right? And second of all, um, this, this idea that, you know, on top of explaining all of biodiversity, an evolutionary biologist has to explain the origin of life itself. That's also quite mistaken, um, which is not to say that there isn't, uh, you know, a compelling theory, scientific theory, that uses understanding of natural mechanisms to explain the origin of life. I suspect that's true. Um, anyway, so those would be the first two things I would say. It's not about the origin of life, and to say that life evolved is not to say that it evolved by church. Yeah, so, so it's what about that is like saying that, um, mm. it's like saying that the game of poker is, is not a game of chance. It's because she played poker. Oh, but poker. it is in an important way in the sense that the, there is a random element, clearly, in the sense that a mutation, for example, among many other kinds of, of uh, novelty that it can occur on a genetic or developmental or or phenotypic. But that's my level. point. Those things yeah, are random. Sort of yeah. sort of yeah. sort of okay. Well, yeah, so there is a random element, but they're highly constrained. You know, so, I mean, if you want, if you roll a million dice and expect to get all sixes, that's, that's the refrain. You haven't said it yet, but I suspect it's coming soon. If you roll a million dice and get all sixes, that's pure entropy. And that's kind of the caricature of the, the evolutionary explanation that I hear from younger creationists and intelligent design advocates. That's not at all. But evolution can only work with the chance things that it's given through no. mutations and other processes. But, but that's the raw and material. To me, and to me, I'm going to finish, to me the, uh, the way the evidence is going, it's very much the opposite of what Matt was saying before. The more we've discovered, the more problematic it is to accept evolution. It becomes more and more unbelievable. And don't just take my word for it. Someone like Thomas Nagel, who's an atheist philosopher, has recently written that you know the more we've discovered about the incredible complexity of life, the more unbelievable the naturalistic uh, explanation becomes. Yeah, so we should always, always listen to philosophers over scientists. Thanks. Um, I mean, the, the, your poker analogy is actually rather a good one, because if you're playing poker, you're getting a random hand. Now, one day, you're going to get four aces, and that random hand is going to win. It's going to be naturally selected. It's going to win that game, and you're going to get money back. So it's going to cheat. So what, what you're mixing up is the raw material, which is random noise, from the filtering mechanism, which is natural selection. They are not the same thing. And the, the essential difference, I think, between your point of view and the point of view of the scientist, is that we are willing to change our minds. And we have changed our minds again and again and again. If somebody were to prove that the Earth is 6,000 years old, and really prove it, I would cheer, I would stand on my seat, and I'd say to the person involved, start learning Swedish. You will get the Nobel Prize. <laughs> but I fear that nothing science this idea that the world is, is, uh, uh, is less than 10,000 years old, that's demonstrably not true with every respect. It's just all the, all the evidence from radiometric dating says it's not true. What I would say is that, that it's actually a really exciting research framework to work in. This, to, to, to work in a young earth framework, you can do research that no one else is doing. You can answer questions that no one else is asking. You can do new work, and that is exactly what is being done by a whole load of young earth creationists that are fully qualified in that field, people in paleontology, people in different areas of geology. They are doing research, that is, and it's being published in, in secular journals. I mean, I've got, I've got an example here. There's a paper in sedimentary geology, sand injectites, work in the Grand Canyon. They are doing work from this young earth framework, and it's being published in secular journals. What is, it, what is it in that paper that says that the Earth is 6,000 years old? It's, well, the funny thing about this work is that the... I won't go into the details. Wait, wait, wait.
We can't, can't say, we, we can't it's, deny that you know there are individuals who are pursuing research at this level, and you're holding up an example of one. And I, I, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. I think that could be quite compelling. But, but the fact remains, you have quite a challenge in front of you to demonstrate to the community of scientists who are come from a variety of uh, philosophies and perspectives that the Earth is orders of magnitude younger than every, uh, almost every member of every major geology department in every university on this planet. You know, is willing to say. I mean, I think to, to point out that these individuals are doing research is fine, and it's good to think out of the box. I give you guys lots of credit for taking on a popular stand in a format like this. But in um, the other hand, anything, anything, what, you know, what relied upon extensively for billions, millions and billions mm. of years of dating rock, the fact is... Radiometric dating is one small component in a large tapestry of evidence that of leads course, us to, that to, to the incur the Earth again for the Earth formation Earth. of stalactites. Mm -hmm. And there are rates for the sedimentary rocks on the Earth. But I've been 200 miles down the Grand Canyon, and it's very clear from the evidence that's been pointed out to me that those rocks were laid down very rapidly. Because at sem several points, you can see layers of rocks that do a, a complete U turn and then continue. Those rocks must Look, have been. You obviously so were looking at this stromatolite, which is an algal bloom that can, you know, that is preserved at very, very high points in the geological section of the Grand Canyon. And but you can't let the point I'm dating. There are catastrophic flooded during results 40 days. for radiometric dating. So if you can, which one are you going to choose? The one you want? Or is That's it a question that you guys have to ask for yourself, flawed? I think. What do they have to ask for themselves, that question? Well, I guess the sense, you know, so the idea is that the entirety of the geological community has fooled mm -hmm. ourselves into thinking that the Earth is not millions of years old. Um, and he and our, our colleagues are saying that this is somehow a bias on our part that we're selecting. You can't tell the time data unless you know what, what time doing. the clock was set at the beginning. Nineteen hundred and five came relativity, and the whole of physics collapsed. Everybody moaned and groaned for five years, and they thought, <laughs> all right, we were wrong, we have to start again. You guys will never do that. What, 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 what it seems mm. to me in saying that, that, that you, young I, scientists I, I, can do good work. I, I, I've always been told I'm just to think it, but yet you're admitting that young you scientists can do good work. Do you think this is gross yeah. incompetence by 99% of the world scientists no. that has led us to this position, that no. they've got it so oh, oh, catastrophically it's wrong? It's a specialist discipline, isn't it? You spend years earning a D PhD in a certain aspect of science, but it doesn't mean you're competent in other areas. And that means that you're not open to all of the evidence in the way that you like to believe. I think it's important that, you, that we don't uh, uh, argue from authority here. I mean, if I wanted to, to use the argument for authority, I'd join the church, because that's what it's based mm. on. Uh, evidence is what drives this. It's not that, that some senior <coughs> professor says this. We look at the we have continental drift. How are you going to explain that without hundreds of millions of years? We've got all sorts of evidence for, you know, an asteroid hitting the Earth 65 million years ago. We've got the dinosaurs. We've got, far, we've got the Precambrian the Cambrian explosion. We've got Precambrian life. All these kind of things were happening over hundreds of million years. It's the most marvelous story. It's really fascinating. Right. <laughs> it's got a lot of it. It is an argument. Let me move on to Abdullah. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, I think you accept the older, don't you? And you accept...